If you're an MSP or an IT service provider, everyone thinks you're chucking money up in the air just because you work in technology. But the truth is, cloud has kind of eroded some of our margins and other SaaS businesses. So watch this video and I'm gonna run you through how you can actually use cybersecurity and RoboShadow to monetize more revenue into the business. And if you stick to the end, I will just give you a couple of tips and tricks in terms of how I grew my MSP in the UK to over 10 million turnover. And the master trick for that is probably not what you think. So before I go any further, can I ask you to like and subscribe because it helps us know that you want us to build more MSP style content and really helps the channel out a lot. So thank you very much for that. So ultimately, what are we looking to master here? We're looking to master, obviously, making more money. Then there's an element we want to be able to reduce costs. So we want to be able to use automation in cybersecurity to be able to reduce costs. And ultimately, we also want to be able to use it to be able to keep hold of clients as more of a sticky element within our offering. We know that as contracts come up for renewal, every single other competition MSP out there are going to be offering some kind of cybersecurity offering. So it's just making sure that you've got a good, solid cybersecurity offering uh, within your stack as well. So in my MSP, I have three types of clients and I do spend all day every day speaking to MSPs. So there does seem to be that there is a consistent theme across these three types of clients. So they are those that have been hacked. Anyone that has been hacked, it's quite easy to sell cybersecurity services to and that they kind of know that this is something that they need in life. So they're the easy bunch. Now, the bunch that are not as easy, but still fairly easy, are the ones that haven't had a cyber incident, but do hold customer data, their reputation depends on it. And more importantly, what usually happens is that their customers are bugging them about, can you confirm that you're good from a cybersecurity perspective? So that group of people, fairly easy to market to. The problem being is, this is anywhere from 40% to 90% of a, of a client base is the group that effectively don't really care about cybersecurity. I do call this the selective amnesia group. So this is the group of people, unfortunately, is the majority in most MSPs. Yeah, we're not really that bothered about it. Yeah, we're gonna pretend to be bothered about it, but we're not gonna pay for it. and We don't want any extra services for it. Why don't you ask me later? Then when they do have that incident that's fairly critical for them, all of a sudden the selective amnesia kicks in and they're like, oh, wow. Oh, I thought we paid for that. Oh, I thought you was doing that. Oh, I thought you looked after that. And that's the group that's more difficult to market to and be able to generate revenue from. So the best way to engage these customers that are not really engaged in cybersecurity is just to roll out RoboShadow ubiquitously using our MSP enterprise plan. We don't really charge on a per agent basis in the normal way that these sorts of apps do. So it allows you to roll the product out ubiquitously. So whether or not it's RoboShadow or a competing product, just show these customers their environment, show them their problem show them where they'd fail a pen test, show them where they'd fail a compliance framework, or show them, in fact, where they're more likely to get hacked. So that just takes the onus off of you as the MSP and just makes it to more of a risk versus cost decision that they need to make. So ultimately, what comes out of this is probably one of three conversations. How much is this to tidy up in a one-time thing? How much is a contract to do this or daily, weekly, or monthly? Or sometimes it's, I'm, I'm still not that bothered about cybersecurity. No, I don't really feel like it. Um, but ultimately you put that decision back in their hands and that just starts that sales conversation and makes it a lot more palatable for the end customer. So the way that you end up making money out cybersecurity does vary based on the MSP and the client group effectively, but you've obviously got your one-time assessments, your one-time remediation, and your one-time assessment. We have videos on how to use RoboShadow for prospecting, so feel free to go and check those out. But ultimately, you've got those one-off kind of cost um, projects that you can do for end customers. But I'm just now just gonna run you through the elements in terms of how people do monthly charging billing uh, for cybersecurity services using Robo Shadow or any other competing products. To start off, a daily SecOps remediation process. So it's looking at what comes into RoboShadow on a daily basis. We, get, we have a daily report for this and it's just being able to remediate to a certain level um, and just managing that on behalf of that customer, whether or not something's coming in from Intune or a new vulnerabilities come out. Just saying to the customer, we will get you to a certain standard on a daily basis seems to be 
the best way of being able to do this as an all-encompassing service. So some people will just charge a device uplift cost. So in the States, that could be as, as little as $2 to $15 for sort of general cyber remediation. Um, sometimes people will just do it as a fixed cost. Maybe usually for smaller customers, it will be, well, for $250 a month or £200 a month, something like that, we will get you to this certain level and we will do that on a daily basis. So that seems to give the end user a bit more comfort that this stuff is being administered on a daily basis and just gets you some some definite revenue that's going to be coming in every single month. So another way that you can monetize RoboShadow is just read only. So obviously the enterprise version of RoboShadow has a lot more higher cost to end user businesses. So being able to almost just resell them, but for you to be that trusted party and send them the report once a month or send them um, an update on a daily basis or something like that. So it's not necessarily that you're remediating or actioning. It just, it's that read only element. And again, there could be some good quick revenue in there for you. And it just also make sure that they're understanding their responsibility in cybersecurity on almost a daily basis. So another good way would be sync with compliance. I kind of alluded to it before, but just sync to a certain compliance framework. So our job is to get you to keep you within Cyber Essentials or Essential 8 or SOC 2 or something of that nature, just getting the customer to focus on that compliance framework, something that they recognize that they know that they're asked for. That seems to be a good way of getting that happy billing vibe um, from charging additional cybersecurity services for customers. And if they're not really that into a compliance framework, you can just say, well, look, why don't we manage your account to seven plus CVSS score, so highs and critical vulnerabilities. And it kind of gets into their head that, oh, we're not just doing stuff for busy work for the sake of doing it. We are actually doing the stuff that's likely to affect my business. So that's a good way of getting that conversation running. Maybe just a little bit of a bolt on here is how do you charge that customer for managing cybersecurity incidents effectively? So we know that the insurances are meant to pay out for managing the cybersecurity incident. Doesn't always happen as we know, but effectively, unless you have this conversation with the customer, they're just going to assume any cyber incident is all of your problem. Now, what we do in our MSP is we offer up a bond and we basically say, you have to pay £5,000 if you have a cyber incident, if you want us to work tirelessly on it all night. It just kind of stops a bad vibes conversation if the worst actually happens. Or what's commonly now being used in, in our MSP business is we will just charge a monthly fee from incident support so they know that we will be managing that incident. And again, we don't always know what we're going to be doing as part of that. The general sales pitch to the customer is that we have to work all night, weekends, resolving whatever we need to resolve. So this is effectively an insurance policy you have with us um, to be able to execute that for you. Now, ultimately, when these incidents happen, usually you end up doing this work for free anyway, just to keep face with the client that's going for a bad time. So it's really good to get these conversations ahead of time. Now, one of the nuances around making money with cybersecurity tools is how much noise and faff there is within the platform. So RoboShadow is famous for being low noise and low faff. We get a lot of good compliments. Check us out on Reddit as being able to offer sellable cybersecurity services to end user customers, but without having to do a lot of work. There's a lot of automation within RoboShadow. Our auto fix will go through and fix stuff from cyber benchmarks, Windows updates, third party applications. So a lot of that work is going to be done by RoboShadow natively in an automatic fashion. So whatever platform you're using, just make sure that it's going to make money for you and not cause lots more work and lots more headaches. So I promised you, if you stay to the end of this video, I would just run you through how we built our MSP to 10 million turnover. And the answer effectively isn't what you think because we had to take slightly different paths uh, in being able to get there. In the good old days, we used to sell blade arrays, sands, PCs, storage, all of this good stuff. Now the rise of cloud just kind of took away um, a lot of that business and, and, and replaced it with sort of lower margin uh, monthly services. We all like our MRR, but you know, if the margin's there effectively. So we really had to pivot. So we did end up having to go up market. So we had to sort of do some DevOps engineering. We had to do some cloud engineering. We had to do cyber security assessments and get penetration testing done, which I'm sure that most of the MSPs watching this video have to do. Compliance framework stuff like Cyber Essentials and SOC 2 and ISO 27001. So we had to specialize in some of those more sticky higher end skills and now AI as well. So we do a lot of AI. Um, that's a nice sticky skill set. So just being able to do some of those higher engineering skills allowed us to go up market a little bit and just allowed us 
to replace heads of IT, CTOs, and CIOs. Now, you may be thinking there's a big cost base for that, but ultimately, if you have a good engineering team, especially with ChatGPT, you're able to teach and slowly just offer those more higher end skills. Um, and effectively, that just allows you to start going up market. And then you're competing for jobs that are more like 10 grand a month instead of sort of 500 pounds a month or something like that. So it's not for everyone. And it's not um, it's not something that everyone can do easily. But that's the trick. That's what we realized that we had to go up market and had to be able to attract a more higher MRR grossing uh, type client. So that's how, how we got to 10 million. It's not for everyone, as I said, um, but do get in touch if you want any more information on that. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding how you can use cybersecurity to monetize within your MSP. Please do get in touch. We love having these conversations, even if you're not a RoboShadow customer and you want to ask some just advice about how to monetize cybersecurity in general. We really love this topic, so do feel free to get in touch.